everyone. This is the video for classification of matter. It is um, the third unit, the third video in unit one. Um, here we are working on this um, uh, third learning outcome. Here we're going to look at how to further classify matter. So we started with the phases of matter or the states of matter. Now we're going to get into a little bit more detail here. So again, for this video, we're going to be just focusing on classification of matter, specifically focusing on pure substances versus mixtures. Now, remember we said that matter is composed of atoms. Um, and the idea is that regardless of whether it is a solid, liquid, or gas, um, we can classify matter as either being a pure substance or a mixture. Now the way that you can really distinguish between these is pure substances can only be broken apart by chemical methods. Um, mixtures on the other hand um, can be separated by something physical um, like size or something. Okay now if we look at um, the periodic table. Now I know that technically you do not have to have had chemistry uh, background in order to take this class and so I just want to go ahead and point out right now that the periodic table is the basis of this class. You have to know that H stands for hydrogen. HE stands for helium. Um, if you don't, as we get into the next few units, it is going to take a ton of time for you to go back and forth. And so for me, I think you need to know the symbol and the name. Now this is not the periodic table that you're going to be getting on your exam. Um, instead, what I usually give is this one. Um, the reason I give this is, again, in order for you to write structures and stuff like in unit two, you need to have the fact that, oh, N is, oh, sorry, this isn't my editable one. Um, this isn't, you know, N is nitrogen, but NI is nickel. You need to know that. Um, and it just kind of needs to be ingrained. So if you do not have the periodic table memorized, and I'm not saying um, location, okay, I give you that blank periodic table, um, you don't have to know H is 1, uh, calcium is 20. You don't need to know that. Um, you just need to know that Mg is magnesium. You need to see the symbol and then be able to give me the, the chemical name. Um, now, uh, notice in these symbols, the first, if they're, for the ones that are just a single letter, H, B, C, N, O, those are capitalized they should be capitalized. If you're working in MOM or on the discussion forum and you do not capitalize H when you're talking about hydrogen, you will get points deducted. It is not hydrogen unless it's capitalized. On the other hand, if you're writing out the name hydrogen, hydrogen the name doesn't need to be capitalized, okay? Um, and so as we're working on this, guys, just be aware uh, to you need to pay attention to that. So Anytime you have a single, there we go, letter as your atomic structure, I has to be capitalized if you're talking about the symbol. On the other hand, if you're writing a sentence about iodine, you don't need to capitalize the name iodine unless, you know, it's at the beginning of the sentence. Um, anytime you have symbols that are two letters, L-I-B-E, N-A, the first letter must be capitalized, the second letter must be lowercase. If you do something like this, that means not applicable, that is not sodium. Um, it has to, in order to be sodium, capital N, lowercase a. Um, same thing, you know, you talk about sodium in a sentence, it does not need to be capitalized unless you are um, at the beginning of the sentence. Now let's talk about what we're going to be using here. And I know this, this is an aside, but this is one of the reasons why this unit is technically pretty short. Um, we typically use, let me change this to a highlighter. That's not highlighter. Let's go with, yeah, yellow. We 
use these probably around unit five. These are the elements that we typically use this semester. Um, so it's up to you how you decide to memorize these. Um, generally, if you just know one to about 56 for the first uh, exam, you'll probably be okay. But I mean, really, there's only about six additional ones after that. So it's about 62 elements. If you are not good at memorization, this is where flashcards come into play. Um, H is hydrogen, HE is helium, LI is lithium, beryllium, B is boron, C is carbon, N is nitrogen, O, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Most of them make sense. The ones that don't, uh, for us anyway, um, are the ones that have names rooted in something else. So like sodium is Na, and that comes from ooh, either the Latin or the Greek name. Um, K for potassium. We have a P for phosphorus. We needed something else for potassium. Um, and again, that comes from a different uh, language. If you look at Fe and CO, um, actually, cobalt makes sense. I meant this one. Um, Fe comes from the Latin fer ferrum or ferrus. Um, it's the Latin for iron. Same thing here. The Latin for copper is cupric or cuprus, depending on the, the form of the word. Um, and so those are the ones that don't typically make sense. I think most everything else um, does. Um, and as you look through these, you'll find some really fun things um, like krypton, um, probably the where they got the, the term kryptonite for Superman. Um, things like that are kind of embedded in the periodic table, which is just fun for us. Now, um, the other thing I kind of want to point out here is this periodic table in particular that is embedded in your slides um, really tells you a lot about how matter exists. We spend a lot of time talking about solid liquid gas. Almost everything on this periodic table is present normally as a solid. Um, we have a few gases over here in the column called noble gases, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine and iodine um, as well. Uh, so like these are gases. Um, this is a gas. Uh, but almost everything is a solid. And the only uh, two, liquid, two liquids are bromine and mercury here. Um, everything else, you know, you can kind of get an idea for. Now, also, what I really want to point out is that, oops, as we get to um, later units when we start talking about uh, metals versus non-metals and so on, um, almost everything, I don't know if I can erase this highlighter or not, I can, gave me, um, is a metal which doesn't make sense. You don't really think about the calcium in your bones being a metal. You don't really think about the sodium in table salt as being a metal, but it is. It's an essential metal. You need it to survive, and we're going to talk about that. But almost everything on this periodic table, all the known elements in our universe, are metals. There are a few metalloids, and there's, you know, some non-metals, but the bulk of our elements are metals. Okay, so that kind of tells you where to, to look at. If you do not know atomic structure and symbol, you need to kind of go, I mean, not atomic structure, I'm sorry, atomic name and symbol. Um, you need to start looking at memorizing those. Your first exam is in a few weeks. You want to have those down. Now, let's get back to pure substances versus mixtures. If you remember, we said matter is either going to be a pure substance or a mixture. Pure substances, let's just define those first. Pure substances are going to be one of two things. They are, can either be an element, which is found on the periodic table. Now see why you need to know those atomic names and symbols. Because if I tell you, you know, oxygen, you know that that's an element. Um, if I tell you Na, you know that that's an element. Now, elements can be either atoms or molecules, okay? Almost every element on this periodic table is going to be present naturally as an atom. There are a few elements. Um, I call them Hofbrinkles. 
Hofbrinkles are going to be present as diatomic molecules. What that means is you don't find hydrogen floating around by itself. It's always going to be two hydrogens bonded together or H2. Oxygen doesn't float around by itself. You guys probably know the molecular structure for oxygen is O2. Fluorine is going to be diatomic. Br, this is the um, native structure for Hofbrinkles. They are not going to be just an atom. It's going to be a molecule. So remember, as you're doing your reading, elements are found on the periodic table, but they could be present naturally as either a single atom or a molecule. Okay, and so here I've got my examples. Oxygen is a element. So it's a pure substance that's an element, sodium is an element, and fluor iron is a um, element. I will tell you guys, I spent six years of my life working on iron and its relevance to Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, Frederick's ataxia, and many other mitochondrial diseases. I love iron. Make sure you know Fe is iron. Now, pure substances can also be compounds. Compounds are two or more elements or two or more atoms of different elements that are bonded together. Here, um, something like water, salt, um, NaCl is just table salt, and then I put everybody's favorite, caffeine. Um, interesting side note, um, caffeine and chocolate only differ by three atoms. Um, if I'm looking at this structure right, it's these three atoms right here. Um, but I have to really make sure I'm in this right orientation. But the idea being um, more than one atom bonded together and you have a compound. Compounds are still pure. It's still all the way, you know, the same throughout. You know, it's not, uh, it, 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 they have the same composition, okay? And so if you look at the difference between a pure substance and a mixture, you know, pure substances are the are going to be the same composition from every different point. Everywhere you look is going to have the same composition. A mixture is going to have um, more than one co component. Oops. I am sorry for my writing. Writing on a tablet is not as neat as writing on paper. Okay. Now, elements cannot be separated by physical means. Compounds cannot be separated by physical means. You can't just, you know, try and tear an oxygen molecule apart the way you could um, paper. It does not work. There's only, um, you have to use a chemical means, which we'll define in a minute. Mixtures are going to have more than one component. And these are going to be physically mixed. They're not chemically bonded together, OK? Now, because you have more than one substance, they can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous, okay? The prefix homo means the same, genus means, uh, you know, like throughout, so this is going to be the same throughout, hetero, um, prefix hetero means different, so this is going to be different throughout. So homogeneous mixtures, and you're going to learn this about me, I love food and I love real world examples, homogeneous mixtures are the same all the way through. Um, something like rock candy um, or Kool-Aid coffee, you should, and now don't be a smart aleck about, you know, the drugs in your coffee or anything like that, but, you know, a homogenous mixture, no matter what sip of coffee you take, it should taste the same all the way through. Um, no matter what sip of um, Kool-Aid, no matter what lick you take off a sucker, it should taste the same. It should be the same composition all the way through. You cannot physically distinguish between the, the parts of, you know, the solution or the structure. Now I do have brass on here. Brass is a mixture of um, copper and zinc and it's 
atoms that just sit next to each other. It has kind of a coppery color, but not quite as orange. Um, and it's much stronger because that zinc makes it that way. And so this is a mixture, um, specifically an alloy, uh, that we would, you know, deal with if uh, we were dealing with structures. Now, so that's homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixtures, you can't really tell the difference between them. Um, heterogeneous mixtures are going to have different parts that you can easily easily pick out. So like a chocolate chip cookie, I can pick that off and eat it right now if I wanted to. Um, muddy water, you can see the dirt and the water kind of there. Raisin bran, um, if you like that kind of thing, you could pick out the raisins and eat those. Um, soil, you could pick out the grass or the d rocks or the sticks, you know. So here's my flashcard slide. You know, matter can either be pure substances or mixtures. If it has only one component, um, can only be separated by a chemical method, it's got to be a pure substance. If there's only one type of atom, it's going to be an element. Notice I don't say just one atom, I say one type. So it could be sodium bromine or it could be more than one atom bonded together. As long as they're the same, it's an element. If there's more than one type of atom, more than one element there, it is a compound. It is a molecule um, compound that is pure. On the other hand, if matter has more than one component um, that can be separated by physical means, it's a mixture. If the composition is the same all the way through, it's homogeneous. If it's not, um, it's heterogeneous. So let's do some practice and just take a second for a minute to think through this so that you really have the practice on your own. Um, how would you classify a jar of jelly beans? Is it pure substance or a mixture? And you should say that it's a mixture. And then we could go ahead and say, well, is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? I can pick out the jelly beans I like, so this has got to be a heterogeneous mixture. Whipped cream, um, even if you're not a uh, chef or a cook, hopefully you know that that is also a mixture. Um, that It's a mixture of cream and sugar and air, and it just tastes good. Um, it is a mixture, hopefully it's a homogenous mixture. You have it the same all the way through. Air, this is my trick question right here. Um, I love to do this in lectures where I give you a question that I kind of think is tricky because it really makes you think. Um, so it depends on air. Let's just talk about um, the air like in a scuba tank. Because this is a closed container, nothing is coming in or going out, it should be a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, um, Actually, it's probably going to have some helium in there. Um, and it's going to be a homogenous mixture. You want to have the same amount of oxygen every breath you take. On the other hand, if we're talking about an open room, it's going to be a little bit more dynamic. Um, for example, if somebody in you know the back of the classroom were to open a bag of Doritos, um, they might be able to smell the Doritos but not everybody would right away, and so it would be a heterogeneous mixture. Carbon dioxide, here we've got a molecular structure, so that must be a um, molecule. It's going to be a pure substance. Steel, even if you don't have the periodic table memorized, you can go back to the periodic table. Steel is not on it, so it must not be an element. Um, and I didn't give you a formula, so it's got to be a mixture. Um, hopefully it's a homogeneous mixture so that the bridges and stuff don't fall down. Nitrogen gas, even though this is a molecule, it is a pure substance, it's an element. And gasoline is a mixture. Hopefully it's a homogeneous mixture because if you pump out gas, you want to get the same amount of uh, octane, same amount of ethanol as the person next to you. Um, so there you go. That concludes this video. Bye.